Thank you, worship team. It is such an awesome opportunity to worship the living God. Please, please feel free to make yourself comfortable. As we may or may not have mentioned, Pastor Dave and Mickey are on a much needed vacation for a couple weeks. And uh, so we're trying to fill in the gap. We're here because Jesus, at some point in our lives, he, the Spirit of God pursued us. His loved one out. Thanks again, Sarah and Jan. His loved one out. Um, maybe you wrestled with him a little bit, just as I did. But eventually, his grace and goodness wore me down, and I surrendered. If you have a testimony of something that God is doing or has done recently in your life that has really um, been powerful to you, the Word of God tells us that we overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And I, I was asked to mention what testimony time is not. It isn't uh, like a prayer request time or just like, you know, um, summarizing what's going on in your life, although those, those things are important. But this is just like a time to point to Jesus and say, hey, this is what Jesus did for me. Would anyone like to share a testimony? Okay, uh, Cheryl, would you like to come up? We'd like to ask you so that our friends on Facebook can see you. Could you come up here, please? Many of you prayed me through the surgery that I had at the end of January on the 26th. So just over three months, and I want to let you know, God healed me so quickly, never took pain medication, went to class the night after I had surgery, and I went for a 15-mile bike ride a couple days ago. <laughs> Go, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. That's wonderful. Brother Mike. One thing that I also um, did not mention is it's not a sermon ad or anything. It's just, you know, what's God doing? This spiritual protection has been through a hard place, housing and my prison job. We had an officer almost stabbed pretty bad, but it turned out great. So my, um, my protection prayers are always Psalms 91, 92, excuse me, and Psalms 27, and I pray that every day. <laughs> it's a one, a protection prayer. And thank God for the body of Christ. The other one's seated in heavenly places. You're kind of above the, your intercession with Jesus Christ. You're in his throne room. The devil can't harm you there. And I had to have that revelation because I was going through a hard time. Got me to Bethel, and that was the first thing on the screen. And God knows right where I'm at. That was about a year ago. It's been a hard fight. God's a victory. But a protection in the prison, even at my, it's always been an angel walking out in the front lines from Burnside to Spokane to, these streets and uh, in the prison every day as every day it's on front lines and thank god for the angels that are going around us hedgerow of protection and what a victory we have in jesus on that the devil's just crushed at the feet and there's this revelation that you learn through the experience of knowing him and that personal relationship but that protection for thank god that there's safety and angels, safety in him, and safety with the revelation of victorious all the way with Jesus Christ. This has been a blessing this week because it was real, it was hard because uh, this, this inmate, I was in, I've been a lot of, a lot of altercations up there, thousands, and seen a lot of stuff, and personal ones are uh, when you're attacked, and I've been attacked, and uh, that gets hard, and this inmate, the only one in the West Complex, I was right next, and it was the same inmate, 
in a vulnerable spot. He got knifed in the face in a vulnerable position, new officer, he had seven kids. And thank God it's only superficial wounds. I prayed for him and prayed, I pray every day. And keep praying for us up there and in the prison up there. Just pray that in 92, 27 said David Hart. And David's really, <laughs> he was a warrior and God was all looking after him. And 27 is huge on my list. Read those Psalms. 92, 27, 92 especially, provision, provisions of protection. Have angels go before you. I do that in evangelistic work. We pray, and we pray, and we have covering. We have, it's good that we have covering with the church, the, the leadership. I know there's always an opposition to kill, still, and destroy with him, but it's victorious in Jesus. And you, you anoint that with oil, and you pray, and you intercede. And it's, it's a big thing in our lives right now. Look at our world. And look at the violence. Look at the kids dying. And we're, we're waking up to the picture of what, revelation of what God does victorious in all our lives. And amen. amen. Thank you, Mike. So as a, as a family of believers, I think um, that was a good cue for us, Mike, a good reminder that we need to pray for security officers, for all those first responders, medical personnel, emergency personnel, nurses, doctors, all those. So I'd like to ask if you would please join with me in just praying for all of these individuals that help to keep us safe and our community safe. So let's do that together. Father, we come to you in the powerful, infinite name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray the precious blood of Jesus over Mike and all the security officers at the penitentiary, those working in juvenile detention, those working at the county jails, those working in every area of law enforcement, not just in our valley, but across our state, our nation, and throughout the world. Those who have laid down their lives through emergency services, the, the police officers, the firefighters, EMT workers, nurses, doctors, all of those involved in saving lives. We thank you for them and we pray for your mercy and protection. In Jesus Christ's name, thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Does anyone else have a testimony you'd like to share? Please, Renee. We're going to ask you to come up here so that the people on Facebook and throughout the world can see you. Um, it's just exciting what Mike was sharing to, um, <laughs> it just enhances what the Lord is revealing to me and what I'm walking in, the revelation of heaven colliding with earth. And as we receive that revelation, how the partnering with heaven is just increasing. It's awesome. Um, the best is yet to come, you know? Um, five, six weeks ago, pastor got a word of knowledge for back pain, and it didn't specifically say my type of back pain. Peggy got it, but the day before, the Lord said, I'm gonna heal your back tomorrow, but I didn't respond. And I'm leaving a lot of details out. But anyhow, there was a divine appointment in the bathroom with Peggy. The Lord healed my back. But in the process of this, one thing I left out with my testimony a few weeks back is that the Lord said, have Mickey pray for your legs. That will seal the deal. And the morning went on and whatnot. Pastor left the altar open after service. The Holy Spirit said, go sit up front and just sit in my presence, pray in the Spirit. A friend of mine came over. She wanted to sit and talk. Holy Spirit said no. So I wouldn't let her talk. I grabbed her hand. Holy Spirit said, pray in the Spirit. She looked at me like, okay. We pray in the Spirit. The Lord met us. He was doing a work, and he's still showing me what he's doing. But I forgot about asking Mickey. Got sidetracked, whatnot. Pastor and Mickey come in to kind of kick everybody out because they were wanting to get ready to lock up and whatnot. And the Lord said, there's Mickey. And I went, oh. 
and she came and we sat here and it was a quick prayer. It wasn't super spiritual or anything, but the Lord strength lengthened my legs, sealed the healing of my back. I was getting ready for a disc to blow in my lower back and I hadn't said anything to anyone. I'd been teary eyed for weeks. And the Lord promised me he was going to restore me totally. I have not had back pain or swelling in my lower back for over a month. That's beautiful. Beautiful. God's work is complete. Anyway, we have time for one more. Jan, can I ask if you come up here? Thank you. Um, two weeks ago, I, my son is at Moody Bible Institute, Spokane, and two weeks ago, a lot of the students in his class caught COVID, and he got it. And um, so they actually shut the school down for two weeks. And uh, so he was holed up in his, his wonderful apartment where, with his co-worker or his uh, roommates. And he just basically shut himself in the room. And he was tired anyway, so this was a chance for him to just sleep. And, but I want to thank God that he actually had no serious um, symptoms. He didn't have any problem with his lungs. He was very tired, very fatigued, but he slept that off. And it would, took about nine days, and he's doing so much better, and he's catching up on his homework. And I think they all start again next uh, week, if everybody's clear. But I just want to thank God for taking good care of him. Thank you. It's, God is so good. God is so good. I feel prompted by the Lord. I, I don't necessarily get words of knowledge about things as Pastor Dave does. However, I've sensed this prompting from the Holy Spirit two or three times this morning, and that is this. While we still are respecting our COVID protocols, uh, we believe God can meet you right where you are, whether it's in the bathroom, or, you know, here, or in your car, or wherever. So if you have a need and you would like prayer, would you please stand up, and then those around them, please gather to minister to them. So if you have a need, so we have a lady here, there. Okay, so let's just gather around and pray. scriptures. Please continue as the Lord leads you. This is family life. The scriptures tell us to bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of love, the law of Christ. And so we minister to one another and we love each other. We like to uh, transition to updating folks on what's going on. Just some announcements, and if I get an announcement incorrect, I would invite you to help me out. <laughs> so my first, my first opportunity to be incorrect is regarding Celebrate Recovery um, dinner tonight at 5.30. All are welcome. It's a wonderful place to gather together, connect with other people in a loving, protected, safe environment, and grow in Jesus. Also, at this time, if you would like to take a minute to check in on Facebook with your friends and let them know that God is loving on you, and God is ministering to you and meeting, meeting your needs. Um, Dan, do you have the steps to go through on that again? Just run up there. Okay, so there, step one, 
I won't read it to you because we've seen this a few times, but there's a couple of steps. And what this does is it just allows others to join the family here and likely they're needing something right now. So if it's all good. Step four, add the message. Happy Sunday. Glad to be at Grace Church. Okay, Monday from 5 p.m. to 6.30-ish. We have prophetic prayer. We never know how long it's going to go, but it's very good. And if you would like to uh, join us for a prophetic prayer time, we meet in the fellowship hall, celebrate recovery in the fellowship hall. On Wednesday, if I remember correctly, there there is no Wednesday youth group. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, not for two weeks. Okay, so we will return in two weeks. Grace Notes, um, please feel free to subscribe to our weekly Grace Notes. They're very helpful. You get, on a typical Sunday, you'll have the notes for the sermon that are more detailed and that keep you up to date on what's happening. Youth Adventure Retreat, June 25th to 27th, um, for all junior high and high school students. Guest speaker, one of our former young men here, Mitch Wally, um, availability limited spots. If you have any questions, please contact Pastor Mickey when they return, and it's $125 for lodging, food, and activities. They're going to have a great time. Wish I was back in high school. I would be, I'd be great. I'd love to go. Also, we will have a tremendous opportunity for moms and dads, grandmas and grandpas to get some refresher on working with young people, especially the little, real young people. Love and Logic Class, a DVD series with workbooks that will be July 10th to August 14th. I've gone through a Love and Logic course many years ago, and it was fabulous. It was very, very helpful. And then, Four Ways to Give It Grace, church app online, text, mail, Drop it in the drop box back there. Are there any announcements that I missed? Those were the ones on my list. Any other announcements? Hallelujah. Okay, great. What we'd love to do now is we'd love to honor the Lord with his giving to us. As we trust the Lord in all our hearts, only in our own understanding, we acknowledge it, we worship in all our ways, and he provides. So as we prepare for that, we are going to make a declaration, which I think is probably going to appear here. Before we do that, I would just like to share one of my favorite verses with you about God's faithfulness. You can find it in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. And God is able. See, that's the limitation. So God is able to make all grace abound toward you. Toward you and you and you and you and you and you. So that always having all sufficiency in everything, his grace may abound to you in every good work. Would you please stand with me and we'll make this declaration together since I can't see that. I forgot to bring my glasses in, so I'll have to look here. Lord, as we give to you today, 
We are trusting you for our nation to be transformed, to reflect your glory, poverty to be destroyed in our lives, communities and society, for our city to be a place of justice and abundance, favor on our businesses to create jobs, a platform to influence economic systems, blessing, creativity, and the ability to create wealth. An army of lovers released to bring in the harvest, wholeness and holiness, health, prosperity, your glory and presence resting on us. We love you, Lord. Amen. We love you, Lord. Amen. That's a great way to get things rolling.